Hello everybody and welcome back to Analog Vernacular. Today we're going to be playing some more Fire Emblem Three Houses and we are starting chapter 19 today. Getting ever so closer to the end and to all that new end game content. And by content I mostly Part just mean two. story. Verdant <laughs> wind. Garland moon. Just those little small bits we still haven't gotten. War. Claude's plan to call in all Myron forces succeeds, and the Alliance army captures Fort Mercius. Before they can celebrate their victory, javelins of light rain down from the sky and destroy the fort. Forced to temporarily evacuate, the Alliance army regroups at Garrig Mach until it is ready to march on Enbar, the Imperial capital. So this should be the chapter where we actually, uh, most likely it'll be the map outside in Enbar. Not the one inside the castle where we actually go after Edie. Um, unless they do both, but uh, I don't think they do that in this route, but we'll see. Most likely we'll just uh, take over Enbar and uh, probably get Rhea back. And then at that point we need to go after those of Slither, I think. It's almost time to invade the Imperial capital. We still don't know where Rhea is, but if she's alive, she's likely in Enbar. Damn right. Hopefully we manage to find her without too much trouble. We need to save her quickly. I know, but if we're not careful, she'll just be whisked away again. I'm sure you must be anxious to see her again. All I care about right now is saving her. Well, if that's what you want, I'll do my best to make it happen. But we're going up against Edelgard here. It won't be so simple. <sighs> Our next stop is the Imperial Capital. We've sure come a long way. What are you talking about? This is Garrick Mach. It's where we started. I didn't mean literally, Raphael. I was speaking symbolically. My earnest desire to protect the Alliance has carried me this far. It will not fail me. I am sure the rest of you all have your own reasons to fight as well. Of course, I understand that the fight will not end until we defeat the Empire. And now the time has arrived at long last to march on the Imperial capital and defeat the Emperor. It really gets you thinking, doesn't it? We all come from different places and have different goals and dreams. But thanks to those two, we were all able to come together and overcome all sorts of challenges. You are referring to Claude and the Professor, I assume. Even within our own odd group, those two are particularly unusual. Oh, so you are aware that you're odd. Well, that's... <laughs> it was simply a figure of speech. I am speaking about Claude and the Professor right now. They're like the wind and the trees. Huh? Claude and the Professor are? What does that even mean? And who is which? Oh, um, I was just thinking that if we're the birds, then those two are like the trees and the wind. The Professor is a great tree that kindly embraces us and watches over us as we perch on its branches. Oh, Marianne, that's like the sweetest goddamn thing I've ever heard. And Claude is like the wind pushing us forward as we soar across the open sky. You are a treasure, girl. You're a treasure. God, she's great. Hmm. The metaphor about the professor is solid, but <laughs> I think Claude just blows us around on a whim. Still, we owe him a lot. <laughs> Damn right, Hilda. I think that's beautiful, Marianne. I can really picture it. When this war is over, I'd love to paint a picture of those two. Oh, and of all the people we've fought with as well. You mean like a historical painting? I like that. Maybe our descendants will look at it a long, long time from now. I must say, that piques my interest. I look forward to seeing how you portray my valiant efforts. <laughs> when you put it that way, we may be witnessing one of the greatest events in Fodland's history. It's a lot of pressure, but the sense of duty I feel is even stronger than the fear. I'm just happy to be here with all you. I won't get scared, no matter what we face. 
We have our goal. Enbar, the Imperial Capital. Let's get to work. Okay. Maybe we do go into the castle in this. I wonder if uh, it's going to be back-to-back -back chapters. I'm trying to remember how they did that in the last, uh, in the other route. Uh, it's Sylvain's birthday. Um, sure. Okay. Let's figure out what kind of tea he likes. Bergamot and Saros. Do we have either of those? Mmm. We do not. All right, let's do Elmiron because we have four hey, of those. Hey, hey. Sorry for the wait, Professor. Thank you so much. Ah, delicious. Yeah. Uh, tell me about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Dining partners. Yeah. Hmm? And working together or past laughs? Working together. I see, I see. I feel like you can see right through me. Disagree. Thank you for the treat, Professor. I'd like to do this again sometime. Okay. Let's watch our supports. Then we will explore, and this month I think we have our last paralogue, don't we? Yeah, just retribution left. Okay. Claude and Flame, they're finishing theirs. Very nice. I have told you already, I am quite alright. You say that, but... Who said it's here and everything? Care what do you have to say? I could not bear to stand here and do nothing. Flane. Hey there, Flane. What's that about? Looks like Sedith is as overprotective as ever. Eavesdropping, were you? Well, you are spot on. I do wish you would leave me be and learn to trust me. Listen, Flane. Before I take a stab at your true identity, there's something I want to ask. And what is that? Sedith is your father, isn't he? <laughs> um, pardon me? Can't get, get, it, can't get anything past him. I've been thinking about this for a while, and my latest theory doesn't make sense otherwise. That overprotective attitude of his, it seems like more than just sibling concern. More like a father protecting his only daughter. How can you be so sure? Hilda's brother and Raphael are quite similar, are they not? They're both pretty clingy, sure, but even they are willing to let their sisters live their own lives. Whereas Sedith, there's something more at play there. An entirely different dynamic. I imagine that is because I... Even taking into account your special blood and the people targeting you because of it, I feel like Sedith has devoted his whole being to you, like only a father would. Have you confronted my brother with your theory? <laughs> As if he'd tell me anything, even if I did. Though maybe if I tried to trick a reaction out of him, I could try calling out Daddy from behind him when he least expects <laughs> me. <laughs> nah, he'd probably kill me if I tried that. Not a good idea. <laughs> good that call. That sounds most entertaining. I would love to see you give it a try. <laughs> Perhaps She's you like... could request it. <laughs> Father, please grant me your daughter's hand in marriage. <laughs> Whoa, girl. <laughs> oh, I can feel my face turning red. <laughs> Damn. All right, she, she's ready to watch him get murdered. Hey now, don't joke about that. That's something that should be done properly when the right time comes. Do you mean to say that <laughs> the right time will come eventually then? Hmm? Huh? 
Well, you never know what the future holds. Smooth talking. But forget that for now. I want to talk about... As though this were something easily shelved. <laughs> this topic holds far more appeal than that of identities, if you ask me. Yeah, come on, Claude. All right, that, that, was, that was pretty cute. Hilda and Sedith. Let's go. Oh, it's Sedith. I'd better slip away before he... Ah, I see you are indulging in a bit of reading. You are fond of books, I take it? Yes, reading's one of my favorite pastimes. I was just finishing up, actually, so I think I'll... That is most fortuitous. <laughs> um, fortuitous? How do you figure? Come with me. I have a story to share with you. Once upon a time, deep in the cold mountains, there lived a lazy fox and an industrious squirrel. The squirrel worked tirelessly all day long, while the fox did nothing but lounge around and play. Oh, please tell me this is one of the stories that Sadith wrote. When autumn came, the squirrel hurriedly gathered up acorns for the winter. But the fox continued to play without a care. A biting winter fell upon the land. The mountains, caked in snow, concealed all nourishment from sight. The hungry fox went to the squirrel's dwelling, but the squirrel had locked up tight and gone to sleep. Every so often, the squirrel would wake, enjoy a nibble of an acorn, and then return to an easy slumber. The fox, on the other hand, with nowhere else to turn, was forced to scrounge for food in the bitter cold of the forest. Forlorn and hungry, he wandered in solitude all through the winter, until spring came once more. And so it is to this very day that foxes are denied the comforts of hibernation. Oh. Ah. Okay. I really learned something about foxes. <laughs> she did not she did not take a single lesson from that story. She's just like, "Okay, thanks for the weird story, Uncle Seth." <laughs> I read lots of fairy tales <laughs> like that when I was little. But the lazy fox and the industrious squirrel, huh? That one, I he don't wrote think it. I've heard He totally before. wrote it. That is not surprising, <laughs> considering I wrote it. Yes, he did. Oh, you wrote it? I did. When Flane was young, she loved fairy tales more than anything. I would read them to her often. This one, however, is a more recent creation. I wrote it for the benefit of the children in the monastery. Of course he did. So, what do you think? I'm curious to hear what sort of impression it made on you. <laughs> it's so cute! And I learned nothing! You, you found it to be cute? I can just see it now. You writing fairy tales for your little sister. That's just the cutest thing! Honestly, to me, you usually come across as stern and overly perceptive. But now I know you have a sweet side, too. I feel like I'm seeing you in a whole new light. That is not what I was hoping to hear. <laughs> overly perceptive. Overly perceptive. I'm, like, trying to figure out if, like, if I would take that as a compliment or not. Like, I don't think she's meaning it as a compliment, but, like... Hmm. All right, let's explore. Here's an idea. Cornelia took control of the kingdom capital and then founded the Fargus Dukedom in the Old Kingdom territory. Still, Fargus has remained a mere spectator with regard to our actions so far. It's not so surprising when you consider that they can't even get a handle on the Fraldarius territories. Let's see, did we end the month with good motivation or not? I don't remember. Some months... Hmm, we'll check. Okay, we ended the last month with really good motivation. What? Okay. Hey you, listen up. I've got something to report. Remember that battle six years ago? Oh, um, I'm guessing you do. 
Anyway, remember that knight who watched over Abyss with me for a while? I've been on the hunt for his whereabouts, and I finally found out what happened to him. Uh-oh. Your friend. What happened to your friend? My friend is Aww. no longer with us. Dead. Figured as much, but now I know for sure. I did get to meet his big sister at least. Oh, you two should get married. I'll never have the chance to thank him for our time together. But maybe I can find a way to help out his sister instead. Betty would have liked that. He's going to come back from the grave and be like, Don't touch my sister! They're going to get married. Mm. Those lights that came down on Mercius. I might have seen them before. Here at Garrick Mock. Come again? They looked like they'd rained down right on top of us. But at the last moment, they veered off. I think they crashed into ALL. Must have been the goddess's blessing that protected us. What? Wouldn't have that wouldn't wouldn't the bombs hitting ALL wouldn't that have been like in the thousand years ago war? Come again? Strange. Unless maybe that's like a constant barrage and somehow Ray has been saving us from it for years or something. Huh. That that confuses me a little bit. Interesting. I don't know much about Almirans, but I guess I have something in common with them. We are viewed as different because of where we came from. There must be a lot of people like us. There are a lot. That's what I thought. People from the north, the west, and even some isolated communities within Fogland. And if that's the case, maybe Clodster's got the right idea. Clodster's. Clodster. That's great. It's fantastic. Destroying the walls that separate Fogland from the outside world strikes me as a bold step. I've spent so long struggling to reclaim the past that Claude's vision of the future casts me in a poor light. Oh, did you think I was serious? <laughs> As if I would ever admit to a fault. <laughs> Ensuring that the tradition of House Nouvelle continues uninterrupted is a noble task. Uh, girl, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but it's been interrupted for a while now. But, uh, you know, maybe we shouldn't bring up that pain. Claude's quite the idealist, isn't he? Not that I've got room to talk. His ambitions are lofty and, well, reckless. One false move, and Fodlin is done for. Although, unrelenting idealism with a dash of recklessness can change the world. I mean, you're basically dark, Claude. You just remove a little bit of the idealism and you're still, you're still basically Claude. Yeah, we still haven't gotten your S rank on your sword yet. I think you're close, though. Um, okay, let's... Is Balthus not down here? He must be somewhere else. Or maybe he's not chilling this month. I think we might do the bathhouse with Claude. Because we're working on his sword too so that he can use that blade. I could just let somebody else use it too. Come on, Byleth. Mm. Yeah, he's going over. Nice. We barely made it. Whew, that was close. I need to be speaking. 
Five years ago, Edelgard said a thing to me. Bridget is a vassal of the Empire. But she also said I always have the freedom to be choosing whether I am with or not with her. I will become the ruler of Bridget. So she said I must make my own path. So now, my path and her path will be colliding. The Death Knight is no ordinary knight. I will prey upon him. I will quench my blade's thirst with his blood. His focus is on fighting you, I'm sure. But mine will be the last face he sees. Damn, okay. What do you got this month? Get a master sale. We haven't even been using master sales at all, really. I guess we've used a couple. Here's an idea. Hi. Well. Have you considered? They used to call Enbar the city of Saros. To assault it together with the knights is surreal. If Saros were alive today, I wonder what she might make of our war. In Inbar, there was once a southern church, and apparently a bishop was dispatched to it. A hundred years ago, the southern church became entangled in an insurrection. Until five years ago, the empire and the church maintained a certain distance from one another. I mean, technically... Saros is in Enbar right now, so... Professor! My, um... My mother might be in the city. I don't have many good memories of her, if I'm being honest, but she's dearer to me than my father. If you happen to see her, please make sure she's not caught up in all the fighting. It sounds like just she's about... She's only a civil servant, so... Hopefully she takes a cue from her Bernie and stays inside. I think just about anybody is probably better than her dad, so... It's a pretty low bar. Professor, well, if we can win this war, then Claude will be the king of Fodlan, and maybe he'll tear down the wall that separates Fodlan from the outside world. Perhaps he will? I know it's hard to imagine, but I really hope he does. It would be so much better if people could live together instead of apart. I might even be able to live an ordinary life in the world Claude envisions. Nardell guy, or Nadir, I suppose. It was all some trick, and we fell for it. <laughs> I don't think the nickname The Undefeated applies if he flees from us. Though, maybe he only got that name by running away. Can't be defeated if you run off, right? Oh, ooh, ooh, she can talk <laughs> shit, can't she? Yes, she can. <laughs> Actors came and went all the time, but the people behind the scenes would stay forever. I'll bet I'd know a few of them now, even after all these years. They've probably left the capital by now, although I'm still worried about them. Okay, nobody's in the dorms. Hmm, dare the undefeated. With a name like that, he's bound to put up a damn good fight. Did you get a good look at Judith? She practically had hearts floating out of her eyeballs when she looked at Nadir. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. Pretty dense, aren't you? Trust me, pal. No one's seen more heart-eyed women than this guy. <laughs> She's got it bad. She's got it bad, it huh? Makes all the sense. Even seasoned warriors aren't immune to love, pal. You know, you might be right, Balthus. I think she'd rather hurt him, though. But maybe that's part of her thing. So, I ain't here to judge.
Look, I'm just saying she really enjoyed putting him in his place. The fish in the pond suddenly started thrashing around like mad. I didn't know what was going on. Then I saw something gleaming in the southeastern sky. It happened right when you were out on campaign. I wonder what it could have been. Wait, what did he say? Just recently, the fish in the pond. I didn't know what was going on. Oh, okay. It so happened. he saw the, the thing that. Uh, so it shot over here. They were able to see it from here. Now let's see. Can I see the map again? Let's see. No, I guess I can't. I was gonna look at the map of Fodlin. But like I'm just trying to think of where where that base was versus where we know the base for those who slither is. Both of them are on the southern side of this place. But it would have to go all the way across, so yeah, I can see it. Okay. <laughs> We're heading up to Embar next. I hope I make it back safe so I can tell my little sis about it. I hear they got a neat opera house there, where Manuela used to perform. What was it called again? The Middle Frank Opera Company. Haha, <laughs> that's the one. My little sis always goes on about how much she'd like to see him perform. I know we can't see a show, but do you think we could at least see the building? I'll see what I can do. I can't remember. Do you only get the uh, battalion That's from it. the Middle Frank Opera Company if you have Manuela well in the party or Dorothea? Nothing to report. Momentum's really picking up for this final battle, huh? Even I'm starting to feel tense. Me! Enbar's history goes back 1,400 years. That even predates the founding of the Empire. It's one of the sacred sites of the Saros faith, so it's a pretty big deal. But hey, no need to worry about the monastery while you're fighting the final battle. I've got it covered. I'll defend it to my last. Mm. Well, I'll be. Just a few months ago, I thought it was impossible to secure a victory against the Imperial Army. But you've shown me miracles can happen after all. I believe that victory is within your grasp. Professor? Uh. Professor! Here we are, facing the final battle with the Empire. It's been a long, difficult struggle. We have to get Lady Rhea back. And we have to crush the Empire in the name of Captain Geralt. I don't know what comes next, but we can sort out those details later. So I'm super curious. I know that I have some viewers who have been around for a really long time watching this series. And maybe some of you have been following along um, so that you can play your own routes um, and your own playthroughs. What is your route through the monastery when you're doing this. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. I'm wondering if other people have different routes and what they are. And um, I'm also curious to know if there's anybody who just does the same exact route I do because you saw me do it first. I'm just curious. It's Let me know in the comments. that we've made it this far without having to fight my father. You might have to face him at some point, you know. Hey. Don't try and scare me. <laughs> I'm just trying to be realistic, my man. If he turns up as a reinforcement during the assault, we might lose. I'd better make my peace with that. Once this battle is over, what will become of Fargus and Fodlin? What would you like to see happen? My hope is for a world at peace. A world in which this present turmoil is a thing of the past, a stuff of legends. I believe those who survived the atrocities of war have a duty to create a new, better world. So the sooner we can stamp out such turmoil, the better. We must win, Professor. There is no alternative here. I won't allow for anything else. I guess this guy has oh. something to say, too. Of course, the Alliance is making sure that the five great lords help with the effort, but we'll be getting support from the smaller territories, too. 
I'll bet this is the first time those territories have worked so closely together, at least since the founding of the Alliance. Yeah. Reinforcements from the Alliance are still incoming. Perhaps we can wait, at least until we have an even balance of power. Plenty of supplies have made it through from the Eastern Church and the Merchants Association and the Alliance. All the people of the Alliance believe we can win, so they're doing everything they can to support us. That means we have to do our best to live up to their expectations. Professor! Speaking of, it's been so long since I've been to the Imperial Capital. I used to go to the Opera there with my mother and brother. I never thought my return would be like this. Okay, let's see. Happy is working on somebody, and I don't remember who. Did we go with Linhart or Ash last time? It was Linhart, because we're going to do the Blue Lions run, that's right. Linhart and Happy. Foods you particularly nope, but also none of, none of your business. Ah, oh, we need to do that one too. We could always agitate that. Okay, let's do Hilda and Seth. And then maybe Cyril and Lysithia, and then we'll uh, continue it's on. It's not Claude has left. Because since he's a lord, we should definitely try and do as many with him as we can. Um, I think... Okay, so we have Annie and Shamir left. Oh, man, I want to see them both, but we definitely don't have time for both. Honestly, we should probably work on Annie, because Shamir has four different supports. I wonder if it makes a difference, though. I wonder if it's the same amount of support points between the two, but, like, those two first C ones just are much quicker. I don't know. I don't know, actually. Somebody let me know if uh, some of these ones with the chevrons, uh, if they take more support points to actually get than ones without them. Claude and Annie. Let's try and do that, and then we'll move on. And he's such a goddamn sweetheart. That smell, mm, it's amazing. Eating alone is nice, but I think I prefer eating with a friend. Okay. So, um... No items over here. My friend, the reinforcements the Lord sent are finally gathering. Truth be told, Fort Mercius would have made for a better base of operation. 
But that weird pillar of light changes things. It's pretty scary, honestly. I wonder what it is. Some kind of magic. Makes sense. But whatever it was, I've never seen destructive power quite like it. I wonder where it came from. Well, I guess pondering it is a waste of energy for now. Let's just get ready to move out. The capital is Edelgard's domain, so she has the advantage. It's going to be a tough battle. What would you say if I told you that it came from a missile base located underground where a bunch of uh, crazy people live? Oh my. With the Empire destroyed, the borders within Fodlin will likely become a thing of the past. With that, the rules of trade will change. Personally, I'm excited to see what these changes will bring. Open trade, more money. More money. So, Enbar, the capital of the Empire. It's finally time. I never thought I'd live this long. It's like any battle, really. Stay calm, stay focused. Don't give in to the enemy or your own fear. We'll get through this. Striking down the Empire is my offering to His Highness. <laughs> I left the kingdom. What am I saying? Hmm. Interesting line. Ten years ago, Dagda and Bridget attacked the Empire from the west. Their final target was the capital. But they were countered at a port town long before they reached their destination. What are you doing there, buddy? I guess our attempt oh, has been stop. more successful than theirs, all things considered. Oh, there you go again. Hello? Looks like we're nearing the end of this struggle. I'm sure Lady Rhea is on tenterhooks waiting for me to swoop in and rescue her. Probably? <laughs> I was just kidding. Pay me no mind. <laughs> Lady Rhea's not waiting for me, I know. No matter how much I might wish she were, she's waiting for you. Catherine, don't worry. I think you and Rhea will be lovers eventually. You got this. You got this. You just, you just keep your hopes up, girl. You'd make a beautiful couple. It really hey. would. Hottest couple in Fodlin. The Empire's army should be divided now, with significant troops still in the west. If they don't assert their authority over the old kingdom's lords, they'll never know when an uprising might start. Ironically, as soon as we capture the Imperial capital, the old kingdom's lords are likely to rise up immediately. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine I'd be returning like this. Of course, most of the nobles in the Empire make their home in the capital. In the Kingdom, all nobles live in their own domains. So if the capital is attacked, it doesn't necessarily affect them directly. What will happen to the Imperial nobles when their capital becomes a battlefield? Professor, we're about to put the finishing touches on this war. I wonder how Fodlin will look without the backdrop of death and destruction. I can't wait to see it. On the other hand, I'm terrified of what the future might hold. Who knows if I'll survive the assault on the capital? Me as a leader? I will save Scum to make sure that, <laughs> that you stay alive, so uh, you're in good hands. Invading the capital and smashing the Empire. I wonder if doing so could really end this war. Care to share your thoughts, Professor? Yeah, Edie's kind of their driving force. You say that with such confidence. I want to believe that it's true. Although for now, better to focus my efforts on the fight at hand. Those things appeared as soon as we got ourselves set up in Fort Mercius. Think what might have happened if they'd have hit us during the battle at Grander Field. Assuming it was the work of the Imperial Army.
What are you doing up here, Leone? We're finally going to the capital. This will be my chance to avenge Captain Gerald. Once we smash the Empire, I'm sure his soul will finally be able to rest in peace. I think you're right. Monica killed Captain Gerald for the Flame Emperor, and the Flame Emperor was Edelgard. I know that the future of all Fodland rests on this battle. Nothing else is more important. But for me, this is personal. For Captain Gerald's sake, I'm going to give it all I've got and more. Could I trouble? Yeah, I think this chapter leads straight into another battle in the next chapter. Because I remember the uh, fight against Edelgard where Daedu showed up. So I think that's probably going to happen again in this route. Rhea will be somewhere in the city. I wonder if she can sense us coming. If we are able to save her, then I expect you will learn many secrets that have hitherto been kept from you. Are you prepared for that? I am. Excellent. The battle will soon be upon us. Let us both be at our best for what is to come. Oh, man. I feel like we're so close to that S rank. So close. I don't think anybody else can teach sword right now, though. Um, is there anybody? Yeah, there are some people upstairs on the third. I'm guessing Cyril and Dorothea. They're like the only ones who are ever up here. Yep. Whenever I think about how we'll be seeing Lady Rhea real soon, I get happy and really get cleaning. We'll get there for sure, right? We'll see her again? We'll meet her for sure. I just gotta believe Lady Rhea is waiting for us in the capital. We just have to find her. Oh, it's Hilda. Fighting in the capital? Ugh. And we're fighting against Edelgard. Double ugh. But with you leading us, Professor, I know we'll win. Yeah! Woohoo! Fighting! <laughs> Scared to be honest. I'm just shouting to relieve the tension, but I'll be fine. All right, girl. We'll be okay. likely that Lady Rhea is confined in the Imperial Palace. If so, then our strategy will be to gain control of the streets and then assault the castle. A street battle followed by a castle invasion. Yep. It's just one battle after yep, another. Yep. It'll be tough, but we have to win for Lady Rhea. I was born in Enbar. My mother and father met in a church there. Not too long after, I was brought into the world. I do not understand how war can happen in such a precious place. It is most regrettable. I was my. I do not. Professor, at last, the end is nigh. I love the Empire. Part of me wants it to survive, but I know that is not reasonable. The Empire's time has come. What we need now is a mighty leader who can rebuild Fodlan and rule it as a single nation. Nonetheless, it saddens me that we will not have an Adrestian Emperor. <sighs> yeah, I guess we can just teleport here now. Please. Professor, Professor! There are all kinds of rumors about you spreading through the Alliance. Some say you're the new embodiment of Saint Saros herself. Trisothus, and then you're, God's popularity you're, you're right. has certainly risen too. Somewhat. <laughs> Damn. I think Claude just got thrown under the bus a little bit. They're like, yeah, we think you're pretty so, cool. Claude's just like did you know a little better? A magnificent canal flows through downtown Enbar. It's said to have been constructed under the guidance of Saint Saros before the Empire was even formed. Ever since, 
That canal has been a major lifeline for the capital's development. And now this is how the Empire repays it. Yeah, that map True. is going to be tough. No good deed goes unpunished. It was tough on hard, so there were some, some real mean setups on, on that Enbar map. We'll have to see how that goes, huh? Please. Um, we don't really need to do the counselor anymore. Yes. I was taught from a young age to believe that the creed of Saros was just the way of the world. To question it never even occurred to me. But Claude and Edelgard are different. They challenge the common wisdom, even defy it. It is uncomfortable to discard familiar assumptions, but that is an essential quality of the visionary. Indeed, true greatness must lie beyond common sense. Hmm, <laughs> that's good. I should write that down. Oh, so close to getting that B rank. Hey. The whole of the capital is going to be a battleground. The city has such a long heritage. Even so, perhaps it deserves to be reduced to ashes for once. But we can't let the common folk get hurt. We should try to confine the damage to the noble section of town. Okay, so we're out of time. We've talked to everybody. We have a little bit of time on the clock. This episode has only been 46 minutes. So, what we're gonna do is we're going to look at who we're going to give these to. Uh, that speed wing, you don't need to be holding on to that. Okay. Let's take a look at these, and uh, I'm going to pause while I kind of go through people's sheets and figure out who we're giving these to, and then I'll come back when we have that figured out. So, see you in just a minute. Alright, I've got it figured out. First off, Byleth is going to get our defense. Is that Ambrosia? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and pick up that Vulnerary again. All right. Um, Yuri's gonna get HP. Um, what else we got? Sylvain's taking both of those one Lux. Two of these. He's gonna take both of them. Let's give him back his Brave Lance. And then Ignatz is taking the speed. That's going to be that. In the next episode, we should be getting to do the paralogue, I think. Retribution. So we have that to look forward to. Our last paralogue. And then basically, it's going to be pretty quick, smooth sailing through the end of the game, I think. Um, once those paralogues are done and stuff, like, yeah. I think that things are going to speed up quite a bit here at the end. There's just a lot less for us to have to do now, so... Um, one thing that I am going to mention before I go is that um, I finally did it. I finally secured myself a PlayStation 5. So this last Sunday, Best Buy was supposed to have um, some go on, on sale. And uh, Saturday night, I was out with some friends, and I was out until 4 a.m. in the morning. And basically, when I got home, I was like, oh, hey, you know what? It's 4 a.m. I don't... Best Buy has not announced when they are going to be releasing the new shipments of the PlayStation 5, so maybe I'll just check right now. And guess what? They were there <laughs> at 4 a.m. Mountain Standard Time in the morning. What a time to release new consoles, huh? Kind of rude, but at the same time, I'm super glad I checked. 
Uh, basically, they had a much better system than Walmart had. Walmart is shit. Basically, that's just bot central. The bots will win every single time with Walmart's system because they refuse to implement any safety barriers um, to stop that kind of stuff. So, just give. I gave up on Walmart. I tried it twice. It was awful. It sucked. Uh, Walmart can't figure it out. They're shit. But Best Buy has a great system. They did it perfectly. First off, their site didn't go down at all. There was no reloads at all. All I had to do was hit add to cart and it immediately said, okay, hey, we're not gonna add it to the cart yet. We're gonna put you in a waiting list. And the button that said add to cart turned into a little button that said waiting dot dot dot. And it just scrolled through that waiting dot 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 for about 10 minutes while I was waiting in that queue. And then boom, all of a sudden it popped up and said add to cart, clicked it, went into my cart, checked out, no problems whatsoever. So I was incredibly happy. Um, and their system is a lot better than what Walmart had. I don't know what other stores experiences are like, but if you're thinking about, you know, trying to get it from Walmart, I will say that experience is really, really miserable. And the Best Buy uh, ordering system worked incredibly well. So the only thing that Best Buy could do better is maybe announce when they're going live with new shipments, but maybe they didn't want to do that on purpose, but I don't know. I don't know. Either way, like, it was a much better experience for me. I'm going to be able to pick that thing up on Sunday. So I'm going to pick it up on Sunday. Uh, because I have PlayStation Plus, I already have access to Bug Snacks, which is the free PlayStation Plus game. <laughs> I think that game actually looks kind of awesome. And um, I'm also getting Miles Morales Spider-Man. Uh, the one that comes with the remaster of the original game. So uh, most likely you're probably going to be seeing some of those games in the future on the channel. So I'm very excited about that because I wasn't expecting to be able to get a PS5 for a long time. Because of, you know, how much luck I had the last four times I tried to purchase one. But yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you all. Um, but we're going to go ahead and end this episode. So thank you all for being here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you like what you've seen here, please do check out my Patreon. The link is in the description down below. Um, I would really appreciate it if you even just took a look at it. Even if you don't want to, even if you don't want to, you know, uh, give me any money. That's perfectly fine. Just click the link, take a look at the page, and uh, leave me a comment and tell me if, it's, if the page is shit or not. Huh? How about that? How about that? Um, so yeah. Anyways, uh, yeah, definitely make sure you subscribe so that you can see when that PlayStation 5 content starts popping up sometime next week. Have a good one, everybody.